Okay, this is my long overdue overview of retrofitting a plasma cam gantry pros and cons. The video in the background is about speed and acceleration and constant velocity to give you something to look at while I'm talking. And we'll use that to talk about the plasma cam gantry in a minute. Just note that V is the set velocity and A is the set acceleration and that is a plasma cam gantry. And you can kind of see the actual velocity right here and the pin is a lot like a plasma cutter where the pin leaves a blob or doesn't work right. It's where a plasma cutter will leave a blob or won't work right. So getting back to the topic at hand, there is only one reason to retrofit a plasma cam and that's to use a plasma cam gantry without plasma cam software. And there's three reasons to do that. Save money, avoid plasma cam, and have more capability and versatility. And there's one reason not to. To keep it simple, plasma cam is easy to use and figure out. But not much easier to use because once you get retrofitting set up, it's not that hard. And when it comes to design, I think plasma cam could be harder to use. But that's splitting hairs, which is best for anyone in particular, can go either way. The gantry is great for plasma cutting and engraving and marking, but it is not very good for routing. Retrofitting can be done for $500 and decked out for plasma cutting for $1,500 or less with common software and components that you may already have. And this is about retrofitting, not about criticizing plasma cam, but cost is only one of the benefits of retrofitting. Avoiding plasma cam is the other because they are not transparent, they do not say what they're selling, and what it does or what it does not really do. All they do is play word games, they have more brand names for their bullshit, and the bullshit they sold me had CNC capabilities. The Design Edge software had no drawing capability at all. And they said it does everything from drawing art and parts to running the machine. When it could not draw at all, and it could not move the Z-axis. And it did not have curve compensation. So first you'd have to upgrade to basic. And what they call basic is almost nothing. And what they call advanced is pretty basic. And without upgrades, it actually sucks. And leave it to PlasmaCam to say shit like, if you buy a machine from another company, you may end up spending a lot more money than you expect on options and other hidden costs. And they do not say it requires upgrades that cost twice as much as the machine itself. Just to draw like normal drawing software and control the Z-axis like a normal CNC machine. And they say shit like, they minimize hidden costs and options, saving you considerable money without limiting your choices. When it's like a damn Etch-a-Sketch. And it's very expensive with nothing but limited choices. Mine didn't even have a readout on the Z-axis. I unplugged the Z motor and put a hand crank on it. And that's 100% equivalent to what they call CNC. Now let's go over the cost of retrofitting which does save you considerable money without limiting your choices. Electronics are about 500 with lifetime warranty on Gecko servo drives. Plasma cam is 500 for the controller if the fuse blows out. Cheat cam is about 150 to create standard or metric cheat code with tons of features with automation, customization, and expansion capabilities. Cheat cam has curve compensation and a built-in calculator out of the box. Mach 3 is 175 to run the machine. Mach 3 is an expansive universal CNC control to do whatever you want with many third-party vendors and capabilities and options to make it look and work however you want for whatever you want to do with whatever you want to use like run a drill, engraver, and plasma cutter side by side in one G-code file. And sheet cam and other software can send output straight to Mach 3. Inkscape is free. 
Automatic torch height control is two or three hundred dollars. So just over one thousand replaces and beats the crap out of design edge upgraded to basic costing two thousand dollars. Then Corel Draw Graphics Suite is nine hundred or twenty dollars per month. And Corel Draw is far more powerful, capable, fast, and customizable than Design Edge's $2,000 drawing upgrades. And Corel Draw has built in standard and metric units with on the fly unit conversions like metric and math and calculator functions. And Corel Draw has multi level drawing and design capabilities like templates, tool presets, macros documents, cloud storage, etc. The list goes on and on and on. While Design Edge hides and doesn't bother saying what all it cannot do. Then, Omic Sensing costs $150 or less. With Mach 3, you can do advanced custom touch sensing routines and control, like a tool setter and touch plate, and automatic tool height calibration, like for engraving non-metallic materials. And with sheet cam, you can have touch height control rules for just over 2000 We are light years ahead of advanced design edge, costing 4000 And we've got metric and two seats at least, which would be another 1500 in design edge. And we've got full Z control, which is another 1000 in design edge. And we can run any size machine, and that's another 1000 in design edge. And you can add Vectric VCarve Pro for 700 with serious CNC capabilities and nesting, which is another 1000 with Plasma Cam. And most of that software has all sorts of automation, customization, control, and drawing power that Design Edge doesn't have. We can run as many machines as we want, with as many accessories as we want, with far less cost and limitations than Design Edge. But there is one downside with retrofitting. Plasma Cam is easy to use when upgraded. It's relatively easy to figure out. Compared to retrofitting and figuring all that out, retrofitting is a science project until you get it set up and working like you want it to. Then it's relatively easy to use. Not everybody can do as good with that as they can with Plasma Cam. So I absolutely do not condemn Plasma Cam or recommend retrofitting lightly. Plasma cam works, and retrofitting works. It's not a one-size-fits-all issue. I use Corel Draw and VCarve Pro for most of my design work, and I would never even want to use Design Edge for that. But I still can't use Design Edge to run the machine without multiple $1,000 upgrades, because Design Edge doesn't come with C-axis control. I don't know what Design Edge's true design and CNC capabilities are, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a very advanced user interface to compete with or keep up with what the retrofit software applications have and can do. Now let's talk about the gantry. Whether you retrofit or upgrade, the gantry is pretty good for plasma cutting and engraving. It is not too good for routing, especially with the OEM Z axis, because it uses a stepper motor and V rollers that had about 0.01 inches of runout on mine. But my retrofit Z-axis in the background video has a servo motor and a high-end ball screw linear slide, so it is a little better for routing. And I actually have a router mounted on there, and the Z-axis is running 100 velocity and 100 acceleration with the router on it, and that's pretty fast. Plasma Cam says their Z-axis can do 400 velocity. They don't say what units that is or what acceleration it has. But I don't think it can move like that with a router on it, especially not at high acceleration because the stepper motor can miss steps, whereas the servo motor on mine cannot miss steps. And if you paid attention to the background video so far, it is obvious that lowering acceleration can cause much slower average velocity and a lot more corner rounding with constant velocity turned on. Who knows if or how Plasma Cam employs constant velocity but physics and math means they can't possibly do any more or better than Mach 3. Their Z-axis definitely cannot compete with this one. And for me, acceleration and not missing steps is what determines how good a CNC machine really is and what its limits are. With plasma cutting and automatic height control, 
Missing steps on the Z axis does not cause fatal problems. And the plasma cam X and Y axis has more than enough velocity and acceleration. So it is very good, if not great, for plasma cutting after upgrades for other CNC applications that don't have automatic height control. The OEM Z axis has more limited capabilities. It's still pretty good for light duty applications like engraving and marking operations. But for things like routing, the additional weight and tool forces limit acceleration and increase instability of the entire spring loaded gantry system. Especially if you have 0.01 run out in the OEM Z axis V rollers. One clear advantage with retrofitting is you can replace and improve the Z axis. But the gantry has some serious disadvantages in that it is all held up by springs, it rolls on paint, and it rides on the gear rack. The effects of that can be overlooked for plasma cutting and light duty work. The drawbacks of that cannot be overcome for routing. I will not cover why that is in this video. I want to focus on what's good about the gantry, and that is the servo motors. And another advantage of retrofitting is that you can use the motors and electronics on a different gantry. But what's good about the servos is their speed, acceleration, and accuracy within the physical limits of the gantry. It's amazing how fast and accurate it can work, which is ideal and very important for plasma cutting. At 100 velocity and 100 acceleration, it is just getting warmed up, doing much better than any slower settings and any slower CNC machines. You can see from a distance, the results on the left are clearly better and more uniform than the slower results to the right. And if we zoom in, you can actually see the highlight on the eye, which deteriorates at 100 velocity and 50 acceleration. And at 25 acceleration, we can see why high acceleration is important. And at 10 acceleration, we can see why stepper motors and slow machines have all sorts of problems due to low acceleration capabilities. Higher acceleration means you can have higher velocity and more constant velocity with less corner rounding and less cross-axis blending on the z-axis, which can even cause premature lifting of the z-axis if steps are not taken to limit those issues. Low acceleration is the cause of many problems with many CNC operations. The higher the acceleration is relative to velocity, the fewer issues you have causing problems, except the higher the acceleration is, the more rigid the gantry must be to not flex during acceleration. And the plasma cam gantry is limited at some point in that respect. The lighter the tool and the better you manage dangling wires and cables connected to the Z axis and any other loads on all the springs, the more acceleration it can handle. And plasma cutting with automatic height control naturally compensates itself against vertical height control anomalies inherent in the plasma cam gantry. So whether you buy or retrofit a plasma cam for plasma cutting, it's not bad. It's better than nothing. It's better than a lot of other systems. It has better acceleration than a stepper motor system for sure. And last but not least, it's just not as smooth and rigid as a CNC machine should be for routing. Overall, I like it and it's A plus for plasma cutting, whether you retrofit or upgrade. I hope that helps clear up some or most of the confusion and controversy about retrofitting. Rather than argue about it, I just want to keep using mine to make more videos about more CNC and drawing issues. Retrofitting is just a different way to do the same thing.